Ricardo Vinci Guerra, and while he's going to the podium, I'll let you know that the paper that um, he first authored on this topic actually was uh, awarded the Troutman Award for a young ophthalmologist. So congratulations, Ricardo. Thank you, Cinzia. Thank you very much for the introduction. So we are starting the, uh, the session on about evaluation of ectasia. So um, we know that ectasia is difficult to diagnose. Uh, particularly before surgery, but also after surgery, because there are many patients with low risk scores that develop ectasia, but it also valid the opposite. So what we really want to do is increase the uh, sensibility of the test. And there is a new theory from Cinzia that says that there is a focal reduction in the biomechanical properties of the cornea, and this focal reduction is driving, uh, the, uh, it's the initiating event for the ectasia progression in keratoconus. And this will result in and steepening of the cornea over time. Um, so uh, the theory says that once this happens, we might be able to diagnose the keratoconus sooner, so with, in a biomechanical stage, before shape changes happen. So, uh, and also after, after that, you will have a topographical keratoconus and in the end, slit lamp keratoconus. So what we want to do is to diagnose ectasia as early as possible. So uh, we created this index that is based on biomechanics and it was published at Cinzia Kindly Said in June of Refractive Surgery. And we created it with a very, very big data set coming from uh, Milano and Rio. And there were more than 600 patients, uh, 300 from one clinic and 300 from the other clinic. They were healthy and frank ectasia patients. And uh, uh, we used logistic regression to develop the CBI, the core this biomechanical index to optimally separate normal from keratoconic patients. One data set was used as training and the other one was used as validation to exclude overfitting. Uh, the CBI, uh, I cannot go through all the parameters, but the paper is open access. So if you want to go deeper in detail, you can just go to uh, Juno Refractive Surgery. So it has four deformation parameters and one shape parameters, which is based on thickness. So let's go through the rock curve. I don't know if you're familiar with the rock curve, but the bigger and the higher is the rock curve, the better is the separation. So you can see that the separation in the data set is, in the training data set is very good with 94% of sensibility and 98% of specificity. But what's important, it's what is very important to evaluate is the validation data set. And we were very surprised that we got a validation data set that was even better in performing than uh, the training data set. And we are very happy uh, to know that also external validation data set from other parts of the world got the same results. So let's go to the first conclusion that to the, our knowledge, this is the first index that is based on biomechanics that is able to produce such an efficient separation. Uh, and this is included in a, um, in a screening report that is inside the Corvis and is called Vinci Guerra Screening Report. And I would like to go through how it looks like because in the second part of this speech that will be done by Professor Paolo, he will show you complex case so you already know how to look at the indexes. So this is the uh, screening report. So you have um, the diagram of the selected deformation parameters uh, with normality values and the BIOP, which is a uh, estimate of intraocular pressure based on finite element models. Um, you see on the right the actual profiles that in this normal patient is sitting inside the two standard deviation from the mean values. In the bottom left, you have what we originally had, so the raw data, you have the video and the deformation of the cornea. And this is probably one of the most important part of the screening report in which you have the absolute values and the standard deviation of one of the most important parameters. So there is deformation amplitude ratio and inverse concave radius, the first two. Then there is the thickness profile and then the stiffness parameter that Cinzia developed. And at the end, there is the CBI, the Corvus Biomechanical Index, which has a cutoff of 0 0.5. So if it is more than 0 0.5, it is, is likely to be an ectasia. Remember that this is made for diagnosis, is not made for evaluation of progression, and is made for virgin cornea. So if you have post-refractive surgery patient, it's going to be abnormal. So as you see, in this patient, all the measurement fits inside the normality values. But let's see an abnormal patient, how it looks like. So as you can clearly see in this patient, we can clearly see that deformation amplitude ratio here, then 
stiffness parameter and at the end CBI are outside normality values. So all these things put together in the same um, screening and the same um, um, report is able to let us know if the patient uh, will have uh, ectasia or not. And as I say, this is published in Journal of Refractive Surgery. It's open access, and you can get it for free. And in the second part of the talk, we will speak about complex cases. Thank you. Thank you very much.